Therefore, I exhort you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a sacrifice, alive, holy, and pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this present world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may test and approve what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. We, we have been made new on the inside, hallelujah, when we become born again. That's what literally happens. We have a new nature. Instead of being, um, having a sin nature that's perverted and crooked, we have a new nature. We become the righteousness of God on the inside. Hooray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus was not born with a sin nature because he was not born of a man, yet he was born of a woman, yet he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Yet I find it really interesting that Jesus was led out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit, and, and there he was tempted. Jesus, he, he was, the, the enemy came to tempt him. And you know, the enemy wouldn't have bothered if there wasn't the potential capacity for him to give in to that temptation. But he had, didn't have a sin nature. What happened is that we, as born-again believers, we're new on the inside, but we still have a body, and we still have a mind, and we have now power, hallelujah, to dictate to the mind and the body what is right and what is wrong. But God wants us to feed our spirits so that we can rise up in strength and power. You know, Wigglesworth I used to say that I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. Because he'd feed himself on the word of God. And, and this is why I'm encouraging people to, to be memorizing the word, to feed on the word of God. Because the Bible says here in Romans that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That's not something that happens when we're born again. But it's a process that as we read the word, as we feed on the word, as we worship God by the Holy Spirit, our ma minds are transformed. Hallelujah. Sanctification happens instantly. Hallelujah. When you're born again. Woohoo! Sanctified, made clean on the inside. But then our minds need to be continually trained and renewed and taught. This is the word of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit can bring it to our remembrance. Amen. Jesus says he gets hungry after fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Then the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. What he was doing was appealing to his appetites, his flesh, his body that we have. He didn't have a carnal nature. It wasn't appealing to his carnal nature. The devil was appealing to the fleshly desire for food, which is like understandable. But I love the way that Jesus responded to him. Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. The devil was trying to get him to use his power to, to, to do something at the devil's bidding. And yet Jesus was saying, he, he answered with the word of God. Why? Because he knew the word of God. How did he know the word of God? He'd fed on it. It, it, it was part of his lifestyle all the way through his childhood, all the way through his his. Um, his life, he was feeding, he was learning, he was studying the Word of God, and he had it on the inside. And the more we read, the more we understand what's right and what's wrong. Hallelujah. As we read on the Word of God, we renew our minds, and our minds are, are, are instructed. You know, our spirit knows the, the difference between right and wrong. But as we read the Word of God, we, we begin to recognize, ah, oh, yes, that's, that, that's, that's what the Lord says. And we, we're given weapons that are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. It's so powerful just to get and to begin to declare the promises of God. When the enemy comes and whispers and he says, oh, this is, this is, this, you can answer and say, this is the truth. Hallelujah. We just did a series on what do we really believe? And that is we, our, our foundation, our theology is based on the rock, Jesus Christ. So you need to study him. You need to search him out. It should be your life pursuit to search him out. Hallelujah. Divinely obsessed with Jesus. Hallelujah. And whatever is in him, hallelujah, it's truth. I am truth, he said. I am the way, the truth, the life. Everybody that came to him was healed. Hallelujah. Without 
exception. There was never one time that someone came and said, heal me, Jesus. And Jesus said, no, actually, it's better that you don't get healed. Never happened. Therefore, we cannot make our theology um, bend it and twist it to try and suit what our experience might have been in the past. But it has to line up with the character of who Jesus is. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Therefore, I believe that when, when we come to him for ask for healing, he always is willing to heal. Hallelujah. Because in the life of Jesus, there is no precedent for me to make a theology that differs from that. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, it's true. That's true. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's true. Hallelujah. In fact, if you don't believe me, I encourage you to go and search it out. Uh, in fact, I really do encourage you, uh, as you feed on the Word of God, as you listen to messages, and, and you know that's why we're podcasting, that's why we do the live stream, that's why we have the archives and the videos, because we want, we want to put it out there so people can feed on the Word of God. But you know, I love to listen to the Bethel podcast and different podcasts, and, and it's great. But I encourage you, be careful when you're listening to different things, to examine the fruit of the people that you are listening to. Because you can have a good argument. In fact, in the book of Proverbs, it says that one argument sounds right until you hear the other side. And a lot of people get taken away by, by doctrines that are spoken by people who are not seeing any miracle signs or wonders, who are not seeing anybody get saved, healed or delivered, who, 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 who perhaps don't even have financial integrity or, or, or marital integrity. And, and people are taking the doctrine because it sounds like a good argument. Well, hello. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you love one another and you shall know them by their fruits. So I really would encourage you, it's good to feed on good stuff, but don't be going eating everything and, and assuming that it's all truth. Truth is found in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's just a little pastoral help there. Hallelujah. Shaka. But that is for free. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the devil then took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you're the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it's written, he'll command his angels concerning you, and they'll lift up their hands so that you won't strike your foot against a stone. Ooh, he even comes with a scripture. And you know what he's doing here? He's appealing to Jesus' mind, saying, well, this is truth. There's a bit of truth here. And he's, he's attacking his identity, if you are the son of God. You know... Jesus is looking for us to be very aware of who he is so that we can be very aware of who we are. Hallelujah. So that we can be rooted and grounded in his love and not blown about when the enemy comes and whispers and says, well, if you're really a Christian, then this should happen and that should happen. And, blah, 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 blah. and he wants to tempt you into reasoning apart from the Spirit of God. If you find yourself going through and getting frustrated and tormented with, with reasonings, anybody ever do that? Where you, we're going, and, and, and oftentimes the only way the enemy can draw you into it is by mixing it with some sort of truth. So there's a mixture of truth and reasoning. And, and if you find yourself in the middle of the night sort of wrestling with something, you need to stop and say, what do I believe? Ah. Therefore, I'm not going to wrestle with all the other stuff, all the other noises, all the other stuff. This is what I believe. God is for me. Who can be against me? He makes all things work together for my good. Hallelujah. Whatever it may be, whatever the Spirit of God brings to your remembrance, He is there waiting to help you. While you're off wrestling with your thoughts, the Holy Spirit's here going, Oh, please ask me. Please ask me. I've got something to help you here. I really want you to have a good night's sleep. You're going to look so much better if you sleep well. <laughs> he's waiting to help you. He's got it right there. Every single thing you need help with, he's looking to give it to you. But most of the time, we don't bother asking. Because we lean on our mind. God likes your mind. He gave it to you. 
but he wants it to be renewed with the word of God. He'll show you where to go. He'll show you what to do. Hallelujah. So I said, what do you want to do, Holy Spirit? What's the truth? What's the truth here? As soon as I st- find myself fussing or feeling oppressed or feeling frustrated, oh, the poor discouraged. Oh. What do I believe is what I ask. What do I really believe? And what are you saying, Holy Spirit? And people get tormented even about that sometimes. They're like, oh, I'm trying to get a word. What's he saying? What's he saying? He's saying, just rest into me and know that I make all things work together for your good. Hallelujah. Ah. Listen to him. Read the word of God. He wants to speak to you. He, He wants to bring his bride to maturity. Hallelujah.